Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spade, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Jamboard. Jamboard is Google's interactive whiteboard. It is a perfect tool right now in education because as a teacher, you can use this whether you have students who are physically in front of you, whether you have students who are learning remotely, or if you have a combination of both. So if you have students in front of you and some that are learning remotely, Jamboard will allow them to all work together. So today I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can use this tool. So let's first look at all the different tools that you have in Jamboard. Over here on the left, you'll see there's a toolbar full of different items. The top one is your pen tool. When you click on that, you can select whether you want the pen, a marker, a highlighter, or a paintbrush. And then there's several colors that you can choose from. And whether you're using a mouse or a stylus, once you select a color and what tool you want, you have the ability to write whatever you want. And this is really bad, I'm using the mouse. Um, but you can use a stylus if you have one, um, and you can just write or draw whatever it is that you'd like. The next tool is the erase tool. So if you wanted to erase part of that, you can. You also have the ability to clear frame at the top here. So if you select that, it will just erase everything. So I, let me control Z undo. And then if I go to clear frame, it will just wipe everything off of your board. You've got the select tool. So once you have pictures or different items, you can select them and move them around. Underneath that, you've got a sticky note. So right here, you can type in whatever it is that you'd like. And you can choose up top here what color you want it to be. So you can select yellow, green, blue, pink, orange, or none so that it comes out clear. We'll just select yellow for right now. And then you have the ability to click on that sticky note and you can make it as big or small as you'd like. You can move it around, you can rotate it. You can also edit it, duplicate it, or delete it. Underneath that, you can add an image. So if you have a file that's saved on your computer, you can upload it. You can also do a quick Google image search. So if I was looking for, say, a picture of a graphic organizer, I can select the fine and then I can pick one of these. I'll just select any one for our purposes and then hit select. And then you'll see it puts that in my jam and I can click and drag that around. And just like before, I can rotate it or I can make it bigger by clicking on the corner and dragging it. Now remember I had that sticky note before. So if I click on the picture and then go to these three dots, I can select order and I can send backward or send to back. So you might've seen a similar function in this like in Google Slides. So let's send that to the back and now you'll see that my sticky note is on top. Also from add an image, you can select items out of your Google Drive or pictures from your Google Photos. The next tool is the shapes, and this is a newer one, so if you haven't been in Jamboard in a while, you might not have seen this. Um, it defaults to circle, but if you click on that, you'll see there's circle, square, triangle, diamond, arrow, a bar, half circle, and a rounded rectangle. So if you wanted to put in one of those, just select it, and then you can click, and you can drag to make the shape look however you want. So if I wanted an arrow, I can click on that. And up top here, you can select the border and a fill color. So you can decide what color you want your shape to be. We'll say yellow. And then again, I can move this around and I can rotate it however you'd like. Uh, another one of the newer tools, if you haven't been in Jamboard in a while, is the text box. And this was a tool that people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, back when it first came out, you only used to be able to use the sticky note to write text. Now you can put in a text box. So I can put in a text box wherever I want. So I could select, like, if I want to write my name, I could do that. And then again, just like anything else, you can change the style, you can change the color, and then you can change the alignment. And the last tool is the laser tool. And this just allows you to highlight certain things and it just disappears. 
as you move it around or you know once you leave it it just goes away so one of the nice things about Jamboard is that it allows you to be able to create several frames. This will allow you to have students working in groups so that they're not working over each other. So for instance, I could create several frames and assign that to each group. So I could take like frame two and just call that group two. And then I could make another one and call this group three and so on and so forth. Or I could create several different topics. So I could write something like causes and then go to the next one and call that effects. And then I can go through and tell the students to fill in whatever they think belongs on each slide. And there's also a tool up top here that says background. And this will allow you to change the background. So you can do dots and you'll notice that the background now has dots, or you can select rules. So if you want it to look like a piece of paper or they're square. So if you want it to look like graph paper or there's solid blue and solid black. So you have different options for the background that are just built in, but you can also just do a regular Google search. So let's say I just wanted it to be a map. I can select that. And again, you can do this in Jamboard if you go to add image Google image search, but I also want to show you that you can do this in Google. If you go and do a search, you can just click on any picture. So we'll just click on this picture, uh, which is a map of the United States. You can right click, copy image. And then if you go back to Jamboard, you'll notice that if I right click, I can't paste it. But if I press control V, it will allow me to paste it. And again, you can make this as big or small as you'd like. So if I wanted this as the background, you know, I could tell the students that I want them to highlight a route from wherever to wherever, and then they can go through, select a color, select a highlighter, and, you know, make their own route or whatever it is that you want them to do. Another really great tool, as you saw my, from my example earlier, is you can put in graphic organizers. There's all kinds of different things that you can have the students working on. So if I wanted to have them do like a compare and contrast, I can, again, copy image, come back to my Jamboard, control V, and then just put that in there for the students to work on. Now, a couple things about Jamboard, and I know some teachers have asked me if this is the best way to have students write over PDFs. Um, it's not. There are better ways, and I have a video that shows you how to do that using Google Slides. I prefer that method over using Jamboard. So I have a link to that in the description below. I would definitely prefer that method. However, if you wanted students to work together um, to come up with ideas over PDFs, I think this is a more appropriate tool for that. Now, there are some limitations to Jamboard, such as there's no revision history. So there's no way of really knowing which student did which work. So if you were to go back and try to see what student wrote what comments or um, put what pictures in, you can't do that like you'd be able to in a Google Doc or Google Slides. However, there are a lot of opportunities that Jamboard gives you that you don't really have with other products. So one of the things is allowing students to be able to collaborate. And again, you can share this document with whatever students you would like. So you would just do that like you would any other Google product. Select share, and then you can add in the student's email addresses, or you can post this in Google Classroom. You can post this in Google Meet. And that's always a fun way to have students make sure they're staying engaged while you are presenting material. So if you were to create a jam and then put that link in the chat while you're in a Google Meet or post that in a um, Google Classroom and then have the students go into the Meet, you can talk to them while they're working on the jam. And one of the fun things that I've seen teachers do is because you have the ability to copy and paste images is you can have students working on this and they can also use like their bitmojis, which is just a fun way to like really get them engaged. And so you just have them find a bitmoji and then paste it in there. So again, I can just find a bitmoji and then when I come back into my Jamboard, I can control V and then you would just, you know, resize it to make it as big or small as you want. And again, it just gives students the opportunity to be able to have some fun and really personalize their work. If you click on the three dots next to the share button, you have a few more actions that you can choose from. 
So you can either rename your jam, you can download it as a PDF, you can save each frame as an image, you can also remove a frame, you can make a copy, you can also see the updates, and it gives you the opportunity to send any feedback you might have to Google. So it's easy to see why Jamboard has been one of my favorite tools for a while. And as schools continue to evolve and remote learning becomes more common, this is the kind of tool that teachers should love because it allows them the ability to connect with their students regardless if they're physically with them or they're learning and teaching remotely. And it allows them to connect students whether the students are physically in the same space or the students are remote. If you're using Jamboard and have a really creative way, please feel free to share it in the comments section below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking on the little bell next to it because then you'll get notifications every time a new video comes out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.